Did that get you hot under the collar or is it just me? Yes, here we are, folks. I never actually thought I would produce this video for you today. We are discussing the Challenger 3. Yes, the Challenger 3. You heard that right. There is going to be a third revision of the beautiful British main battle tank. This is not new news. It's fairly old, considering that a lot of people have already covered this topic. And you guys have been screaming at me to make this video. And I thought I would finally get into the realm of main battle tanks again, especially my homeland's main battle tank, because this is probably the most exciting news that could come for main battle tank enthusiasts out there today. Uh, we all know that the tank originated from the UK, the original tank that is, and the history of the tank has really, really been stemmed upon British tank history. Now, we haven't always made the greatest tanks in the world, I have to admit. World War II, there was some challenging designs that were made in World War II, but the Challenger II, I will still, hands on my heart, say that is one of the greatest main battle tanks of the world, but it also is very, very dated for its time, considering we are in 2021 and the Challenger II is still using technology that is far less superior than some of its counterparts that it could potentially be engaging in combat. Now, let's start off with a few things that we need to really talk about with this tank that are critical. First of all is that this has been needed for a long time, as I've already mentioned. Second of all, this is really exciting news for the British Army overall because a lot of people were discussing whether or not the Challenger 2 or whatever future variant it would be, would be staying with the British Army, which clearly is now not the case. There's been a dedicated funding budget placed towards this main battle tank. It ain't cheap, I can tell you that much. It's gonna be a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money, but it's needed, it's a necessity, it's a requirement to keep the fighting force of the British Army in the armored realm at the tip of the spear. And you know, a cost that is worthwhile, I think. I think we all knew that this was gonna be an extremely costly program. We've had the Challenger 2 LEP, we've had all sorts of different upgrade packages. I've done some videos of it myself of the different things that they're gonna potentially be upgrading to. Nothing was really solidified. We talked about the Black Knight program, active protection systems, etc., etc. But this is a dedicated future program that will be modified for the main battle tank. It's gonna increase its firepower, cutting edge protection systems, uh, and should be, and will remain to be, in my eyes, the forefront of tank designs and poised to respond to the future global threats and challenges, so to speak, um, for this tank of the future. Now, the contract with Rheinmetall, or BA Systems, uh, is to deliver 148 Challenger 3 tanks. Now, to me, that's still not quite enough, considering, you know, the Challenger 2 in its history has had a lot more than that. And, of course, you know, in its German days with BOAR, we used to have, you know, squadrons and squadrons of these things flying around, but... It's a sacrifice that, personally, I would uh, be happy to side upon for the fact that, at the end of the day, you can't make too many of these things. They have to be customized and specified for tank fighting. We can't make, you know, half of them upgrade and the other half stay behind the Challenger 2 program, and some countries have done that. For instance, the Leopard 2 and its various uh, configurations around the world, some countries have partially upgraded some of their fleet with some tank systems out there, and some of them haven't. They've kind of gone on a... I guess a routine basis of when we have the money, we'll try and upgrade to the next package. With the British Army, they're going for the full-fledged setup of 148 of these tanks, which will bring the out-of-service date, technically, to 2040. Uh, it's going to provide a ton of jobs, which for me is awesome, because my you know, homeland is going to get a lot of good skilled jobs. Apparently, there's going to be 200 jobs at the RBSL, or the Ryan Mattel based uh, systems company there in the UK, including 130 engineers, 70 technicians, and the further 450 jobs will be established throughout the wider supply chain across the West Midlands, Glasgow, Newcastle on Tyne, and the Isle of Wight. That's a really th good thing we need to talk about, too, because one thing I was fearful of, and I don't think it would have ever happened, but a lot of people have said, Matt, if Challenger 3 was to be made, do you think they would outsource it to uh, the US? Do you think that the US would design something we'd pay for it or with the Germans? Now, of course, you know, there is a little bit of outside influence in, in stocks that are involved with other countries' purchase of this kind of design, with Rheinmetall, of course. Uh, however, it is going to be a British-made tank, which is great, and that, that makes me proud to know that a new modern main battle tank will be made in the UK by British people, tools in hand. So, fantastic stuff. Now, 
It will offer export opportunities too. There's been some discussion about this tank potentially being sold to other countries. Um, the United States uh, clearly are not going to. They've invested heavily into their own Abrams main battle tank. Germany and other countries that use Leopard 2 are also probably not going to utilize this. But there has been some discussions and some rumor on the grapevine that uh, certain countries, <coughs> Spain, <coughs> Italy, <coughs> have had some interest in this design being brought up to the forefront of main battle tank design. Uh, we all know of the uh, the Ariette, it's a really little cool tank, but you know this tank, when it's designed, the Challenger 3 in its full-fledged capability, will be cutting edge. It really will be the forefront of main battle tank design. Uh, we're not going to play the game of which tank will be best. You know I don't play that game, everyone, and I know many of you can be asking in the comments section, do you think this will beat the Armata? Do you think this will beat... The M1A2 Abrams, do you think this will be... You know, it's, it's not going to happen, okay? You can't you can't quantify this. You can't, you know, speculate as to what tank will be better. All I'm saying is that this tank is going to be one of the best tanks in the world. I would safely say Challenger 2 in its current configuration right now is not. You know I've said that many times before, even though I do say it's my favorite tank. It's just not up to the par. Now, the overhaul will include... The most important thing, I think, of all is the 120mm smoothbore gun which is using the most advanced globally available ammunition, standard NATO ammo, that is one part ammunition as opposed to the three part ammunition that is standardized on the Challenger 2. Of course, you have the, say, fin round or hesh round, you have the bag charge and then the primer that actually engages the, the propellant into the barrel. That's all going to go. We're going to go back to the standard NATO format of one piece ammunition. Uh, and that's a good thing. There's a number of reasons for why it's a good thing. Many of you probably already know this. Uh, but first and foremost, you know, I work in logistics in my civilian job and I know how it works even in the artillery with ammunition. You want to minimize the amount of disruption between sharing ammunition or, or distributing ammunition. And, you know, if you put a battle group of Challenger 3s, Leopard 2s and Abrams in the same conflict, which, of course, we are seeing in potential conflicts of the future in, in uh, you know, Eastern Europe, uh, ammunition needs to be vi widely available and capable of being used on any tank. So this new ammunition will allow that to happen, unlike the old rifled gun, which, of course, you know, a lot of people have said, yeah, but the rifle gun's good. Yes, but it does limit a lot of capabilities for the tank of the future. There is an elephant in the room. We're not going to talk about it today. Uh, it kind of defeats the purpose of exactly what I just mentioned as a positive, but I was kind of baffled as to why, if we're going to spend so much money, we wouldn't have upgraded a little bit higher to 125mm or even maybe 130mm. But I can totally appreciate and understand why they would go this way. It's going to be huge cost. Uh, to go into the 125 or 130 millimeter gun and it defeats the purpose of again standardizing with other nations the 120 millimeter smoothbore is a very formidable main battle tank gun of today and still does what it needs to do more importantly to coincide with that main gun there's going to be a new suite of sights providing the tank commander with the enhanced day and night targeting capabilities unfortunately the current sight that is on the challenge 2 is not super impressive at night or in rough conditions it does work uh, however, it does not provide full CITV or Commander's independent thermal viewing capabilities. So we re they really need a more vivid uh, targeting system on, on the Commander's side. Uh, and they're also going to be improving the sighting system of the, the gunner as well, which is fantastic. In terms of armor, of course, all very classified, Dorchester, Chobham, etc, etc. Uh, there's going to be a new modular package placed onto the tank. I think we all knew that was going to happen anyway, uh, but really exciting stuff. The Brits, we know for sure how to make good armor. We made Chobham, we made Dorchester. Uh, it's very good armor. You know, the Americans, of, co of course, capitalizing on that in, in the Gulf Wars and the Iraq Wars there. So we know how to make armor very effectively. And then on top of that, they're also looking at producing an active protection system, which is really, really interesting. Whether it's, you know, that of the Israeli standard or the Americans design, who knows? We're not too sure exactly what that active protection system is yet. It is subject to a contract. I'm really excited as to what that contract will be. I'm sure some of you can probably speculate some options that will be placed on the tank it's hard to say exactly but there's some pretty big contenders that i'm sure you know the brits are going to be kind of capitalizing on and of course a turret that can be fitted to tanks of the allies of global partners now that's a total different thing that i've never heard before but they're literally looking at producing the turret in a configuration that can be swapped out with other tanks that's really really strange to me <laughs> i've never heard of that before in a main battle tank platform to actually integrate you know, the the entire turret to a new vehicle was very strange, uh, but really cool at the same in instance. 
Uh, they are going to be looking at uh, the increased electrical power and GVA electronic architecture with growth potential. So better networking uh, and capabilities for uh, IT inside the vehicle. So, you know, better network capabilities to logging into uh, the battle group net or, uh, you know, command and control, which is really important, of course, with the main battle tank. There is discussion of enhanced hull protection as well, so beefing up probably the belly plates, and you know that front glasses plate that you guys constantly talk about being its weakness. Uh, and finally, the one that really kind of speaks to me, being that I was repairing these vehicles at one point, is the power pack. They're actually going to be updating and improving the power pack, which personally, in my eyes, has always been the weakness of the Challenger 2. Okay, I love the tank. I think it's fantastic. I know many people who are crew members, combat crew members, have served on these tanks in the front line, whether it be, you know, uh, Iraq or wherever else, Eastern Europe, and they love them. You know, Combat Effective Tank have done the job very well. But when it comes to the powertrain or the power plant of the Challenger 2, I can firsthand say it's always had a rough edge, a really rough edge, uh, not ideal. It's not the most reliable power pack in the world, and they're looking to upgrade that. I do have a contact, and he knows who he is, who works within um, the development of that power pack program with the company who's going to be producing the new one, and he says there's a lot of exciting things coming and some really good news for the tank overall. So that's something I really hope they spend a lot of time and resources on. I know it's important to upgrade the gun and the architecture for targeting, etc. But if you don't get a tank that can move effectively and without high levels of maintenance, you are defeating the purpose of having a tank. Mobility and firepower go key together and protection, of course, on top of that. Uh, I just really hope they don't neglect the, the power pack as, as more so they do for the protection and the main gun. So, you know, for me, in my personal opinion, I'm absolutely over the moon. I've left this video off for a little while because I've been extremely busy, everyone. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to go through a bit of a mental health concern at the moment as well, but that's on me. Um, I shouldn't be taken out on you. I am going to try my best to produce more content for you guys. But when I heard that they're actually going to be reduce, uh, producing the, the Challenger 3, I could not stop smiling because I'm like, yes, it's actually happening. And I always said, do you remember, I was, in many videos I've talked about in the past, I said, we're not going to get a Challenger 3, folks. We're going to get an upgraded Challenger 2 with a new designation next to it. But no, they're actually going to call it the Challenger Mark 3 or the Challenger 3 main battle tank. And that is really, really cool stuff. Uh, to the people that I've spoke to serving currently in the British Army as crew members of the Challenger 2, they're also very, very excited. They're also not getting their hopes up too much. Um, you know, a lot of people that I've spoke to who are crew members, uh, a couple of them are tank commanders, squadron leaders, have said that they're not counting their eggs quite yet. Uh, there's a lot of money floating around. This is contractual work, so contracts never come through until they're actually paid. Uh, and, and this technology could change. It could either change for the better, you know, even better stuff being added to the tank, or for the worse. They may cut, you know, cut the fat, trim the fat on these programs that they want to install. Uh, we'll see. But, you know, they're, they're really excited, but they're also a little hesitant as to, you know, getting a little too excited just yet, because this is a huge infrastructure change of the tank, and it's not going to happen overnight. I mean, we're talking about a tank that's been asked to perform now with this upgrade until 2040. Uh, that is a long time. I mean, I'm going to be uh, an old man at that point, which is going to be very sad. Uh, when the Challenger 4, whatever new tank comes out, but that's a long time. It's a long time to allow this tank to continue its service, rightly so, as it deserves. It's going to get a nice full makeover, and no one can say it's like painting a pig, because the Challenger 2 is a combat-serving uh, and registered tank that is actually taking out armored fighting vehicles in combat. Uh, there's not a huge level of tanks out there in the modern world that can say they've done that. Yes, I know, you know, uh, Abrams wholeheartedly is definitely engaged its targets, as has Leopard 2. Uh, but there's other tanks out there that have not really been put against its paces against armored fighting vehicles in the world. Challenge 2, you know, it's been in insurgency, it's come up against tanks, uh, it's provided peacekeeping, it's served its time, so it, it deserves this. The crew members, the tank regiments, the British Army itself deserve this upgrade. The British government, I think, has made a fantastic decision to not scrap the tank, to upgrade it, provide that 148 uh, strength main battle tank force, and... I am most excited for the future in the next 15, 10, 15 years of actually potentially seeing these tanks in Suffield, uh, which is British Army Training Unit Suffield or Batis. Uh, one day when I'm serving here in the Canadian Armed Forces, I may be able to see them or get a quick actual tour of one of the tanks in the future because I'm hoping that if British Army Training Unit Suffield stays open for the future, they'll bring these bad boys over and I'll actually be able to climb on them and talk to some people and see if I can get a tour. But that's for another day. We've got to 
keep our fingers crossed. Let's hope this contract continues to push through and we'll see a lot more of this in the future. So folks, as you know, this is big news. It's a big deal. Uh, I would love to hear your opinion on this. Please, please, please comment in the comment section below. I really encourage you to hit the like button of this video. It really does help me and my channel. If you did enjoy the content, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and also click the bell button so you can be notified of any upcoming content in the future. I appreciate you all so much being here today. If you also did enjoy, feel free to check out the description box for my various social media and uh, donation or support pages. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting my Patreon, my PayPal and membership to the channel. It really, really does help me a lot and I can't thank you enough. I hope you all have a wonderful day and once again, a big salute and hats off to the Challenger 3 tank. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye.